Hey, what's up everyone? It's George Ramosola here. I know I've been away for a very long time, been really busy with other things, business mostly, and of course, you know, Astro, the software, we're in beta testing now, so it's doing real well. But anyway, regardless of all that, I've got a real good video for you guys today. We're gonna to be doing some sourcing. We're gonna be finding ASINs using Keeper. Now Kiva, of course, very powerful tool, has a lot of data, a lot of things that we need, but we're gonna use one particular part of Keeper to really narrow down the crappy products out, keep the good ones in, and find them products using our suppliers Chrysler. So I'm just gonna jump into this one now, guys. All right, so first, let's focus on the actual price list, okay? So this is the typical price list that we're looking at. We have all the raw data here that we're looking at. It's right in front of us. We have a bunch of products. There are heaps in this list, 4,300. Actually, it's not that many, but it's, it's a few, you know? Um, I've seen much larger lists than this one. So we're gonna go ahead and name this list. We're gonna call it just raw. This part here is raw, this sheet. And we're gonna create a new sheet here. I'm gonna call it found. ASINs, all right? So we're gonna have those two. Now, the next thing you wanna do in this list, you want the first row to be frozen. So I'm gonna just go ahead and freeze this first row. So freeze top row, so that's frozen. And then you also wanna apply a filter to this list. So you're gonna to come to home and come over to filter and click on filters right there. All right, so um, filters now. now Let's go ahead and focus on a brand. This is quite nice. It has the brand name here and the item description. So the, the brand name is in both the item description and the column name brand name. So you know you, you can see that there, but we don't need we only need one of them really. So I'm just gonna scroll down to I find uh, any brand that I want to you know, focus on. So you're gonna basically go brand by brand when doing this. So there's some good brands in here. Let's focus on this one, Neutrogena. So I'm gonna filter out everything else and we're only gonna be looking at Neutrogena at this point. So we're gonna click here, unselect everything, and we're gonna select Neutrogena right there. Okay, so now we're only looking at Neutrogena. Another way you can do that is you can um, click on the filters again. You can go to text filters and you can write contain and you can write Neutrogena just in there. You know, filter out everything that's not Neutrogena basically. Next, let's go to Keeper. All right, so I'm just gonna minimize this list and here's Keeper. Now you wanna click on data and you wanna to go to product finder. Now, as soon as this is up, what you're gonna be looking for, you basically you wanna filter out all the crappy ones. I'm pretty sure Neutrogena has a lot of products that has Amazon on them. So we wanna look at products where Amazon's not really on the listing. Firstly, we also wanna look at the products that sell fast. We don't want the crappy sellers. We don't want the ones with, you know, 250,000 BSR or, or, you know, you want only the ones that move fast. So it's it's in beauty, it's in the US. So I know anything with a, with a BSR of 70,000 and below or maybe 60,000 and below is gonna be a good seller. So according to the category, you gotta think about what your BSR is gonna be. I'm not gonna do the current sales rank. I'm gonna look at the 90 day sales rank in this part. So I'm gonna write over here, I'm just gonna write 60,000 BSR. So we've got 60,000 BSR at the moment. Now, next thing, um, I wanna go back to my price list and have a look at the pricing from Neutrogena products. So th these are my prices here. So we have $5, $4, $3, some are a bit cheaper, $2.87, $4, $5. Now, given all that pricing, for me to be profitable with this pricing, it means I can't really sell anything that's below six, $7 in general. So look at this one, $5.79. For that to be profitable for me on Amazon, considering all the Amazon referral fees, the FBA fees and all that type of stuff and my prep and all that, I can't sell that at any cost, you know, at any price lower than 12, maybe $13. That just won't be profitable. Now there are a few cheaper ones here, $1.58. But basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna go back to Keeper and we're gonna uh, apply up some buy box filters so we can only target products that are above that price point. So let's say um, at the lowest price point, maybe around $9. So we're only gonna focus on products that are $9 and up, and maybe yeah, up to 50. Maybe we'll, we won't focus on too many you know, multi-packs and stuff like that. Next, we wanna also focus on products where Amazon's out of stock. We don't want all the Amazon in stock products to appear. Now, by click on out of stock, that means they're out of stock at this very second. Maybe, you know, uh, two days ago, they may have been in stock. So you might still get some products that are in stock. That's another thing you gotta consider there. Now, 
In this part here, the new third party FBA, we're gonna apply the same things as the buy box. I wanna write $9 to $50 here as well. Now I'm gonna scroll all the way down to this part here. What we're gonna do in this part is in the brand section over here, we're gonna focus on only products that are from Neutrogena. So there are 4,315 products. As soon as we put them in and we've applied our filters, we have 194 products to look for. Okay, so we're down to 194 products at the moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on find products and it's gonna take us to this next page and it's gonna load all the products that met those parameters that we had earlier. So now it's just a simple matter of matching these ASINs with the products from our supplier. There are two ways to do it. If the UPCs are correct in this case, you can go ahead and copy the UPC. That's one way. So I'm just gonna bring up a supply list. So control F, you're gonna paste that in there. It's not there. Sometimes you might wanna remove the, the first zero because sometimes there's some mix-ups there. Okay, so it's not there. So this one, won't, we can't find it that way. So now I'm gonna have, have a look at the actual name of the product. So I'm going back to Keeper. I'm making a, a list, a note of the name. It's a makeup remover cleansing face wipe. Okay, one of the keywords here I see is face wipe or remover. So I'm gonna go back to the Excel price list. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna to come to this filter over here and I'm gonna say contains, and I'm gonna type in the word or face wipe. Hit okay. One with the word wipe. Let's see if it's the same one. Um, Hydro Boost Cleansing Wipes. It's not the same one. Let's go ahead and write makeup remover. I think that's probably a better keyword we can use. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna filter contains. I'm gonna write the word remover. Hit okay. Okay, so here we've got some makeup removers. All right, so it's a 25 count. Let's kind of minimize this and compare the, the naming of um, naming so we can actually find the correct product. So we have face wipe 25 counts. Let's bring up the actual ASIN and see if we can get any more information from the actual ASIN. This one here, ultra soft. So now we've pinpointed, uh, we've pinpointed the actual uh, ASIN. It's a two pack. So what we're gonna do now is that now that we've found the ASIN, we're gonna copy all this data over here that we have. And we're gonna go to our found ASINs. And we're gonna paste that just there. Let's paste also the, the title. So we have the, the first row there. So we know what we're looking at. And expand all this data. All right, great. Now we're gonna also add some more columns uh, into this. So we want the ASIN and we want the quantity as well. So we know what's going on in that, in that respect. So back to the actual ASIN, I'm just gonna copy the ASIN, that, and it's a two pack. So bringing that back up, that's the ASIN and it's a two pack. Let's just briefly see if it could be profitable. But at this point, we don't care too much about profit. We just, you know, if it's if it's not profitable at all, okay, fair enough, we don't care about it. But we wanna see if there's the, uh, you know, the possibility of profit. So we get this for $4.90. Um, this product is is at $26.70. So $26.70, $4.90 to two pack times two, that's $10. So there's definitely profit in this product at that, at that price. So, um, you know, there's definitely at least five, $6 worth of profit from what I see. We just found our first product. All right, let's go back to Keeper now. It's a lot easier to do this on two screens, but of course for the, for the video, I can't show, I can't do this on two screens, I have to do it on one. Let's go to our second ASIN. Um, so Neutrogena Makeup Remover again, it's a 20 count. Okay, let's go ahead and look for any 20 count from that previous list. So we're going back to this list and we're looking for a 20 count. Okay, there's some 20 counts right there. Look at the, uh, the product again. So we have 20 count, mascara individually wrapped singles. It's one of these two, but I think it's gonna be easier to actually open up the ASIN again. Look at the product again, ultra soft, makeup remover, cleaning towelettes, but it's a 20 count. Singles, 20 count. It doesn't say fragrance free. I'm guessing it's this first one because otherwise we would have seen somewhere it would have said fragrance free. So I'm pretty sure it's that first one. But let's go ahead and make a note of this first one. So I'm just gonna open this up again. First one, copy this over to the found ASINs list. Copy that across there. Let's go ahead and grab the ASIN and it's a three pack at $30. So it's a good price. So 
to paste that there and write that it's a three pack. So we've just found two ASINs. They both seem quite profitable based on, on the information we have. Let's go back to the, the list and go back to Keeper and look for more. This is a lotion, Neutrogena Ultra Sheer Dry Lotion. All right, so the first word that stands out to me is the word lotion. So we're gonna go back to our Keeper chart. We're gonna go back to the raw file, the raw data, and we're gonna remove the word remover and I'm going to write in lotion. Now you can also do this with a control F function, but I think this way is a bit more accurate. These are all the lotions that we have, anything that comes up with the word lotion. Let's go back to the actual product. So we're looking at, again, ultra sheer. And the next keyword here is sheer and dry touch. So sheer and dry touch, and it's a three ounce. So I sit, I'm going to control, um, I'm going to do control F and write the word sheer find all. So these are the ones here. We've already pretty much singled out to one of these ones. It's a three ounce. These are all three ounce products over here. These ones here, sorry, just right there. Find which one it's an SPF 30. So it looks like they're all these ones. The only difference between them is what SPF value they are. So it's, it must be this one right there. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that, paste that in there. Pretty sure it's the right one. Neutrogena Ultra Sheer SPF 30 dry touch lotion. Yep, it's the right one, 100% right one. $14.09, we get it for $5.53. There's a bit of profit in there, so it's worth having a look at it. And we're talking about very good BSR, number 225 in beauty. Of course, it's part of a variation set, so we need to do that later. But right now, our goal is to match ASINs. We don't care about the profitability. We want to roughly understand if it's roughly profitable, but we don't want to dive too much into the profitability at the moment. Um, it's a one pack. Pretty sure it's a one pack. Yep, it's a one pack. So we, we don't want, want to go too far into it now. Our focus is on matching ASINs. Later on, when the time's right, we can go ahead and, and see what's profitable and what's not. But now the goal is to build a large list of profitable of, of ASINs, and later on we can test if they're actually profitable or not. Okay, let's go back to our raw file and back to Keeper. Now, we've, so far, we've matched three ASINs. This is another one very similar to the previous one. It's probably actually the exact same one as the one before. So this is the Ultra Sheer Dry Touch. It's the exact same one, no, SPF 55. All right, so let's go back to our list. The SPF 55, it doesn't seem like it's in our list, but it might not be the Ultra Sheer. So let's go to Contains and let's write SPF. From what I see, the conventional naming these guys use is a hashtag. Uh, hashtag and 55. So let's go do that. Okay. So it doesn't look like they have any SPF 55s in this list. Let's go ahead and go to contains again. Remove the hashtag. Maybe they've written it in a different way. Okay. That doesn't look like it's there either. All right. So let's see what else, what other word or you know, from this we can use to find the actual product. Let's go ahead and try the word dry touch. By the way, it's this one here, not this one that we just found. This one is this one right below there. Just click on that there so I can find it. So we can see it easier. All right, let's go ahead and write in the contains file, contains a dry touch. So dry touch. All right, so these have uh, have the word dry touch. From what I see, there's, there's no 55 in this list. It doesn't look like our supplier has this particular one here. So go ahead and move on to the next one. This is same thing, Ultra Sheet Dry Touch 45. So it does, with the 45's right there. I'm pretty sure it's the right product. 45, two pack. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and copy uh, this whole row and paste it in our found ASINs. Let's uh, open it up right there. Go ahead and paste all this data. So it's a two pack. That's the ASIN there. It's the 45, great. Just make sure we don't make any mistakes. Make sure we look at the right product. Right there, two pack, and let's go on to the next one. So another 55, from what I remember earlier, we didn't have the 55. What's this one here? Another 55, we don't have the 55. All right, so we're getting to some different types of products here. So hyaluronic acid, nutrient hydro. Okay, let's let's go ahead and, and start our searching with the word hydro. So again, we're gonna go to the, um, to the, the raw file, I'm gonna, remove the word from the contains, remove this word dry touch and I'll type in hydro. Okay, so how many 
products have the word hydro. Okay, there are quite a few. Let's see how we can um, further narrow it down. Hydro Boost, these are all Hydro Boost. It's 1.7 ounce, all right. So let's let's go ahead and click on this and Control F and write 1.7 so we're going to click on instead of finding one we'll just click on find all actually there's only one okay cool this one here is the only one that's 1.7 ounce from the hydros so let's see if it's, it's the right product right there neutrino hydro boost water gel so it says the word gel here you know what let's bring up the actual listing confirm if it's the right product or not i think sometimes it's a lot of easier when you, you can get you know the words right because when you look at the actual box you know the box sometimes is different to the actual title so it's a good way to look at it so we're looking for the word water gel one thing that we're it's missing so we have nitrogen hydro boost gel cream extra dry let's see if the upcs match the upcs don't match let's see if we can find the upc from the actual box anywhere here no we can't see that gel cream extra dry extra dry hydro hydro boost water gel one other thing that i think you can do to firm for product right you can Instead of searching online, you can just Google the UPC. So just try Googling the UPC that the supplier has to see if it matches the same product that is on Amazon. So just look at the images, see if it's the right product or not. So the first image that appears is this one here, Hydro Boost Dermological Recommended Water Gel. You see, it's, it's not the right product. This is a gel cream extra dry, and this is the product that our supplier has. It's a, it looks very similar, but this is water gel hydro boost. So they're different products. If I was, you know, if I was to send, buy this product and send in under this ASIN, we'd get some unhappy customers. Let's maybe look a bit further. Maybe we can find this product from our supplier, but it looks to be the only 1.7 ounce product. Let's uh, remove this filter, clear these filters, and let's look for all the products that are, that are 1.7 ounces. So I'm gonna go right contains 1.7, Oz. Okay, let's see if maybe it's just written in a different way. So again, we're looking for Hydro Boost, Hydro Boost Water Gel. It seems this, that one seems to be the only one that comes under 1.7 ounce. I'm gonna try one more thing. Sometimes our, you know, our suppliers make mistakes and they might put a gap, you know, between 1.7 ounce. Whereas, you know, in some parts it's no gap. So I just want to make sure that's correct. That doesn't appear there either. So it doesn't seem like they have that one. We're looking at these ones here, 8.5 ounces. From what I see from our list, uh, our supply doesn't have any shampoos that are 8.5 ounces. So we can move on to the next one. Let's go ahead and control F8.5 ounces as well. These are the only products that are 8.5 ounces. This one here it seems to be in, um, we have this one, 8.5 body oil, fragrance free, packet two. We have that product, we can, we've can we matched that one. Okay. Where is it, this one here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that to our found ASINs list. Okay, so it's a two pack and the ASIN is right there. It will be profitable as well, so it's just a good product. Okay, so that's a two pack. So I did this for around five, 10 minutes and I found, what's that, four or five killer products. Of course, I could have done it for a bit longer and found many, many more while being uh, concentrating a lot more and not doing a video. But this method is very, very effective. So one of the things you've got to focus on when doing this method is your actual keeper searching. This is all the products that we found, but let's go back to the actual filter. We go back to advanced filters over here, just click on that. And these are the filters we had applied earlier. Of course, you can play around with these numbers. You can play around with these numbers and come up you know, with better things that you want. So you can, you can um, target the 30 day average. You can look at products that are profitable right now. There's many, many different variations to these filters that you can actually apply when you know doing the keeper searching. But the main thing is you you start from a lot of products. For example, this Neutrogena list, there was 4,300 products associated with that brand. We filtered it down to 196 of the good stuff. The stuff where Amazon's not selling, the stuff that has good BSRs, you know, average BSR. Don't you look at the current BSR. The current BSR can be whatever. You want to look at the average BSR, either the one month or the three months. That gives you a better aspect, a better perspective of what's going on. Same deal with the buy box. 
You don't want to look at things that are profitable right now because you know, the buy box happens to be very high at this very second. Look at the average, look at the 30 day or the 90 day buy box. You want to have a nice buy box average, not just the current average. That's why I tend to focus on the average numbers as opposed to the current numbers. Now, out of stock, you can also filter out Amazon to be out of stock as well. You can play around with the actual values and then you can get rid of Amazon as well over the, 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 um, the averages. So these are a few things that you can focus on. When doing that, and you know, of course, you can. We now we focus on Neutrogena. There were so many brands from that list that we could have focused on. There's all these different brands, and we could have, you know, you go basically brand by brand, and you keep going down the list until you've gone through the entire list, and then all of a sudden you have a list of 500 or 1,000 killer ASINs ready for you to buy from your supplier. So the three main sourcing methods, of course, is software scanning, manual name search and keeper searching. Those are the best three methods in my opinion. Now, the thing about scanning and software scanning is that you get a lot of mismatched ASINs, a lot of ASINs that are multi-packs that appear profitable, but really are not profitable. So there's a lot of mistakes half the time when you're doing scanning, scan searches, you're actually you know, fixing the mistakes that the software made. It's very fast and it's very easy when you're just waiting for, the, you know, for it to match the ASINs, but when you're actually trying to correct them and make sure that they're correct, you know, that's when it takes very long and it's actually quite you know, labor intensive, that part as well. Now, manual searching is very, very good. It's very accurate as well. Using the name, I have a video on manual searching. You can just check that out right there. And of course, keep searching what we went through today. The reason why I like keeper searching is that you can really focus on the numbers that you want to see. You can really you know, break it down by the BSR or by the buy box price or the FBA new price and you can break it down by those numbers and you can only look at the, you know, you can filter out all the rest and focus on those numbers and then compare them with your price list and come up with them good products. Before I let you go, I want to tell you about the Telegram group. There were guys there just nine months ago that are doing $0 in sales per month and now they're doing well above $70,000 per month. So a lot of success, a lot of nice wins and great stories, a lot of knowledge being passed around from seller to seller. There are experienced sellers there, there are new sellers there, and we're all helping each other overcome obstacles and stuff like that. If you have any ideas for a future video, leave it in the comment section below and I'll try to get to it. See you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye.